So even as the words of God is talking, matter of fact, wisdom needs to cry out just like this. Let's go to Proverbs. Because guess what? Wisdom will cry out in these streets. This is a good example of what the Bible's talking about. But our people are so simple, they love simplicity. But if I had some women over here twerking, if I had some, some niggas with some uh, gold chains and smoking weed, it would be a block party right now. This is the problem with our society. This is why we get killed and nobody even respects the fact that they just unjustly killed a man on camera. That's right. Oh yeah, by the way, that cop gonna get off. Right. Cause even the governor said, there has never been a conviction in that state, ever. But yeah, we gonna ride and burn some stuff up. How about you try God? Read. Right. Proverbs chapter one and verse 20. Wisdom cries without. Wisdom cry without a response. It's just coming out flowing freely. But guess what? It's falling on deaf ears. Because our people love darkness rather than they love light. Keep reading. She uttereth her voice in the streets. But guess what? These words ain't going out, boy. Because at the end of the day, the Most High and His angels gonna carry these words and they gonna hit who they gonna hit. And that person may not repent right now. But best believe, these words are brought out for your deliverance or your destruction. So if you turn your back on God, you turn your back on the kingdom. Read. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city, she uttereth her words. In the city is where we are right now. In a place where we are cursed. The Bible says we curse in the city. But why are we cursed in the city? Go to Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15. Bring it up. Because I see my brother on the stairs, you're listening. You're dealing with me. So guess what? The Most High God is going to make sure you hear this today. Because it may not be a, about anybody I can see. It's about for the people behind me. It's about for the people across the street. It's about for brothers like you. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken. God said it will come to pass. God is not a man that he will lie or guess. He said this is going to come to pass. He was dealing with his prophet Moses. Moses was trying to warn the people just like I'm trying to warn y'all today. And Moses told the children of Israel back then that this was going to happen. Read. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Hey, what's going on, sister? What does it mean when, you, when Moses said, if you will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God? What does the word hearken mean? What does it mean? What does it mean to hearken? Is, is that your son? So I'll put it in context for you. You tell him, if you do not hearken to me and clean your bedroom when I tell you to, you're going to get punished. So the word hearken means listen, to obey, to observe, to do. Why would you set ground rules for your son? Is it to make his life hard? Is it because you hate him? Wow. So you said that you make rules and guidelines for your child because you love him, right? Hmm. Let's see if God does the same thing for us. Read Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently. There go that word hearken again. And it simply means listening, right? If you listen diligently, if you pay attention to instruction, guess what? Unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high. So the reason why I asked you why you set guidelines for your son is why you want to set him above high, right? You want him to have good success. This is the most high God talking to his children right now. He said, I set up guidelines, I set up rules, I set up laws, statutes, and commandments. Right. And if you follow them, you will never hunger, you right. will never die, you will never thirst, Bring you will up. never want for anything because I already made everything for you. Yeah, that's right. Ain't that something? Ain't that the love of what a parent would do? Wouldn't you do the same for your son, for your children? Now let's look at the opposite side. Let's say, matter of fact, let's keep reading. Thy, thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. So check that out. Ain't that beautiful? God said he's going to set his children up above all the other nations upon the earth. 
And all these blessings, all these good things, prosperity, success, wealth, love, happiness, it's going to just follow them. Meaning, they ain't even got to really work hard for it. It just follows them. Wow. Let's see what he also said to his children, though. 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass. He said, but, meaning that's the other side of the coin, right? It's an ultimatum right here. He said, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, check this out. Us as a people, right? Because we've been speaking in the context of your motherly love to your child. Now, we talk about a father's love to his whole nation of people. Now, let me ask you a question. What side of the coin you think we sitting on right now? Are we blessed or are we cursed right now? Wow. Why would you say we curse? Everything that's going on. That's a funny observation, right? You know, all the dirt, all the raping, all the killing, all the genocide that the white man has done. Why isn't this happening to him? Surely he deserves it, right? We've been oppressed ever since we got here. And we're the most people that, that looks to God, sings to God, goes to churches. We're the most spiritual, as we say or we think, people. But yet we, we at the bottom. Why is that? Let's go to Amos. Because the thing is this. Amos is going to tell you about the children of Israel. The children of Israel was oppressed in this very particular place. And it's, it's going to come to light. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to connect the dots here in a little bit. Read Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel. So this is God speaking to the children of Israel. I don't know if you ever read the Bible. I don't, I don't know. But what I can say is, a lot of people like to say they are the people of the book. A lot of people say this is a book for everybody. A lot of people try to make religions or whatever they do, right? They watered it down, whitewashed it, tried to rewrite it. Guess what? God is very clear who he's talking to. God is very clear on who the Bible is about. All the way from the Old Testament, all the way through the New Testament, right? Now, read that again. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. God is talking to the children of Israel. Let's see what God is going to say to the children of Israel. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. Ooh. The whole family of Israel. Who's the whole family of Israel? Check out this sign, sis. Check out this sign. Because the Bible is not going to just say the children of Israel, children of Israel, and not explain who they are. These are not just some people that just exist in a fairy tale book. No. Another name for these people are the lost 12 tribes of Israel. Who is more lost than a black man? If you walk up the street and ask 30 black people what's their nationality, how many answers you going to get? Probably 31. Because you're going to have that one extra Negro that's super confused. I'm Asiatic, I'm black, and I'm also African American. Like what? And I'm Christian. Like bro, that, you, see the, you see the point, right? Now check this out. Let's go back to the word of God. He said, he brought us up out of Egypt. Now where you get that, where you get that from? Around your neck. Yeah, where that come from? <laughs> now I'm talking about what is that symbol originate? Where did us as a people adopt that image or that idol? I'm going to just call it what it is. It's an idol. We adopted that from the same place we were enslaved. The Bible just said, God brought us up out of Egypt. Now I got some imagery for you. Because it's interesting to know a little bit about history. And it's really interesting to see how America, it always, it always try to copy somebody. You ever look at our money? What's that? Where does that come from? It's a pyramid. Why would the white man have a pyramid on his currency? Surely they don't put nothing on their currency that does not means something to them, right? But guess what? The pyramid is nothing to them. You know what matters to them? Us. We are the commodity. We are the reason why this is a world superpower. We are the reason why Egypt was once a superpower. Egypt has no power. America has no power. We, the people, are the people of God. 
The whole world revolves around us. There is nothing more special than us. Now let's see what God said. Can read? Against the whole family, which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known. God said, you only children of Israel. You only Judah, Benjamin, Levi. When you look at, when you look at that, who your can for? Who your people? Which one represent you? You say Judah, right? Guess what? That's a beautiful tribe. You want to know who else came from the tribe of Judah? Our Lord and Savior. Who is a black man? See, they they had us so twisted. They, they made us feel like we had to go to Egypt to be great. But never knowing we made Egypt great. We were the ones that built the pyramids. We were the ones that, that had the sciences and the knowledge. We were the ones that saved that country from a famine. Bring it out. Your son needs to know who Joseph is. But before I get there, let's keep reading. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Uh -huh. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. God said, because you are the only thing that's significant to me, when you mess up, you are going to get the curses. You are going to get the punishment. You are going to be shot down in the streets. You are going to have no answers except for me. Right. How would you feel if your son looked at any other person and called her mother? You would be pretty mad, wouldn't you? That's why God said, no, I'm going to tell this God. My children are going to know who their daddy is. My children are going to come to me for answers. And when, they, when your children go elsewhere, guess what? He got to remind his children who their father is. Let's see how our father showed us who he was. How do we get here in America? How did our four parents come to this landmass known as America today? How do we do it? Were we, did we come here on our own free will? Or were we brought here? We brought here, right? Now how did they get all these people? Did we walk here? Did we get an Airbnb, uh, uh, Airbus and fly over here? We came here on what mode of transportation? By boat. Let's see if the Bible is going to talk about the boat. Since I claim that we are God's chosen people, surely they're going to have our history in the Bible, right? Because you're not going to hear about the concentration camps. So when you hear Israel, you think of the white man? No, not at all. Not at all. Let's see. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Bring it up. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Whoa, they go that word Egypt again, sis. Bring us into Egypt again. Now let's give a, a good breakdown of what Egypt is. Let's go to Exodus 20, right? Let's let's show the sister what Egypt represents. I'm gonna even show you what that aunt represents. Because that's a symbol. We even got the history books to prove it. That's something that, that predates even the Egyptian time or ancient Kemet, because Egypt ain't the original name. Let me show you one of the original names or nicknames for Egypt. Exodus. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. Nope. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So God brought us out of Egypt once before. We should have never took any garbage that we learned from our past slave place and bring it to us now. That's why we still cursed. That's why we still messed up, sis. What has the Egyptology movement done for our people? Hell, what has their false gods done for us? Where was Ra when the white man put me on that ship? Where was Anubis when he was raping my mother? Where was Isis when our father was getting slain? Why do we trust in things that cannot help us, but deny the very thing that can save us? Let's keep reading what Exodus is. Which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. That's the house of bondage, sis. What's another word for bondage? What's another word for bondage? Remember I showed you the pyramid on the money. Now, bondage is synonymous with slavery. We were slaves in Egypt. We're also slaves in America. Right. See the connection? This is modern day Egypt. That was Egypt before. So when the Bible talks about Egypt, it talks about a condition of slavery, a condition of bondage, because we are not free. When they wrote the Constitution, we were not included. You know what our Constitution is? Yes, this book right here. Because it's the only thing where we have laws, statutes, commandments, and purpose. 
The reason why our young brothers join gangs, because they don't have a purpose. They don't have the father figure that's given them that life. Our forefathers, before they died, always spoke life into their children. Right. That's how we know who we are. We get our image, we get, we get our spirit, we get our seed from our father. Now let's keep reading. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Yep. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now how do we get to America? With ships. With ships. So we are the people that God has been talking about this whole time. Egypt was a place of bondage. You have to get rid of that answers. I'll show you in the Bible how it's an idol and how it does nothing for us but piss God off. Quite frankly. Now let's keep reading. With ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. Were we not sold unto our enemies for bondmen and bondwomen? Yes, we were. Let's see. Let's go to Exodus 20. And let's see what were some of the reasons why we were sold to our enemies. Let's see what is God's first commandment that he gave to Moses and the children of Israel. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 3. Bring it up. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. God said, I'm a jealous God. You better take that onk and throw it in the trash. What? I mean, like, right now. Like, for real. That's how God feels. That's why you even came out here today. Because God instructed us to tell our people what happens when they, when they sin. We are affected by the curses. Now, let's go to Isaiah chapter 30. Bring it up. And let's read where we are at. Because us as a people, we still make the same mistake today. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 1. Bring it up. Woe to the rebellious children. The word woe means destruction, curses, damnation. That's what the Bible said. He's saying woe to the rebellious children. Let's see what the rebellious children of God are doing. Save the Lord that take counsel but not of me. Meaning they look up to another deity for advice or strength. They pray to that, not the true creator. Right. Read. And that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. So they take glory from something that's not God, which is the real glory. They take a vain glory and they cover themselves. They proud. They tattoo it on their body. They put it in their jewelry. Right. They put it in their music. They Read cover up. themselves with a spirit that is not godly. That they may add sin to sin. Because all these dumb idols teach us sin on top of sin, on top of sin, yes, bringing right. us further into captivity. Right. Read. That walk to go down into Egypt. You see the problem, sis? Our people, our rebellious children, always go down into Egypt. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.